All right, hello students. Our goal in this video is going to be to design a mousetrap car wheel for the mousetrap car you're creating in class and take and make it a nice fancier rim and remove some material to make it easier to spin by using a rotational pattern in Inkscape. And Inkscape doesn't actually have rotational patterns, so there's a little trick I developed that lets you kind of create a rotational pattern and it makes it very, very easy to kind of duplicate um, a rim design that has holes in it and rotate them around. So we're going to try to make both of these types of wheels today. So this kind of pattern with these um, kind of curvy trapezoid looking things, almost like spokes in the wheel. Then there's other rim pattern that has holes cut out of it and even these weird heart shaped things. So let's start by just getting a blank document and we'll do one at a time. So I'm going to make these wheels four inch wheels. So I'm just going to start by drawing a wheel. Now you're going to make the wheels every size you want. I'm going to make them four. And what I'm going to do is, if I look at, let's go back and look at our sp spoked wheel. I really have, let's see, one, two, three. There's really four circles here of different sizes that are kind of combined in different ways. So I'm going to start by just drawing those four circles. Now I have one already. I'm just going to, because I want them to be centered on each other. You could draw them separately and then use a line or stack them on top of each other or using some of the snap tools. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to control D, duplicate this circle, change its color so I can see it, and just kind of make it smaller. And for now, again, you might have the exact size you want in class. I'm just going to eyeball this just because we're here more for the techniques than the exact numbers. So there's one. I'm going to duplicate it again, change its color so I can see it. This is the kind of outline housing for the middle part. And then I got one more, one more duplicate, and this is going to be the hole that gets cut out to put the axle through. So there are those kind of four holes that represent this outline, outside circle, this inside of the kind of wheel, I guess you could call it, or tire looking thing, this outside of the hub in the middle, and then this inside hole here that represents where the axle will go. So we have those. Now we want to remove some material, and then we want to put these spokes in. So what I'm going to do first is just take this outside circle and this kind of maroon colored inner one and just path difference them and subtract out that middle part. And I can actually, I could actually do the same down here. I'm going to leave this circle here for now just because maybe you might want to edit it later on or you might be, when you're fitting axles, if you remove this material down here, if I remove this kind of pink or uh, beige color from the pink wheel, that sets my axle size and it's kind of annoying to get it back. I have to add material and then cut a new hole if my axle is like the wrong size. I want to switch axles or it's too tight or too loose. So sometimes when you're cutting, it's you can actually leave this hole there as its own object because it's going to be cut out anyways and then it makes it easier to kind of change its size later on. So I can just, I'll leave it there. I'll make it like yellow or something because we're because when you go to make this, we would cut that out. Now I want to put the spoke, spokes in. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to freehand this kind of. You know, as I start up in between the outside and the inside of this, I'm going to go down and end in between the kind of pieces of the wheel as well. And now when you're making this, you can make this the exact size you want. Maybe you want this to be, I don't know, a 0.2 spoke. And this height doesn't really matter as long as it's inside the tire part here. It's fine as long as this is inside and that's inside. And now we want to make sure this is aligned, right? So I'm going to click on my, my wheel, click on that spoke I just made, Control shift a to go to the align toolbar and make sure first selected is selected and I can center it sideways and center it up and down. And now this is actually set to rotate the way we want because if so if I click on this once and click on it again if you look really close there's a plus right here or an X and this tells you where the rotational center of this object is because remember when you click on an object once you can resize it if you click on it a second time you can rotate it and it's rotating around its center point right there. So and that's that's actually where I want it to be. So this one's kind of good. So what I can do though is I can duplicate this spoke and then rotate it and I can put it wherever I want to. And if I kind of put it here, I get this kind of cross type of thing. Now I'm going to use control because that actually locks it into place in these kind of even number of degrees. So I believe it does 15 degrees a piece. I think it goes 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45. 60, 75, 90. So it kind of will snap to 15 degree increments, which is really nice because it give, it lets you kind of put things in nice 90 degree crosses. So I can do that and makes those two spokes. Let's say, I mean, we saw this design here that has just two spokes on it. 
let's throw a couple more spokes on because we're here I can just do, I can actually shift click both of the spokes I made so far control D duplicate them click on it one more time so it's a rotational thing and I can rotate these and I can make all those spokes so far so good now I want to add these spokes to my wheel because remember I'm cutting this out of acrylic so I want just one piece so I'll shift select those path union oops I forgot one and now I have those spokes and my only thing I have to do is add a circle in the middle to kind of connect everything together now I could have without the circle it kind of almost works if I got rid of that I could actually this will be fine as a wheel but these pieces here are a little bit close not too bad so if I keep that circle there I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger Remember, I'm holding down control and shift so it keeps the ratio the same and it keeps it centered I'll make it a little bigger shift click the outside wheel again path union and that blends all those together now I have a nice round wheel with this kind of outside place and now I have a lot of material that can be taken out inside here to make my wheels um, spin smooth and my last step is always going to be if I'm cutting it out using the epilog control shift F actually it's already open go to the color thing and I want to make sure I make the outline of the stuff I want cut B.001 and I don't want to color it in because I don't unless you want to etch it but it'd be kind of dumb and I'll select this little yellow circle as well add an outline to that of 0 0.001 and let's make that white and again it's a little bit hard to see if I zoom in they are there and now I have a nice wheel that I can cut so that was our one type that was putting spokes on the wheel let's get rid of this and now we're going to do our second type so I'm going to first again start by drawing a circle let's give it the color just so we can see it again let's make this uh, let's make this five by five a little bigger wheel and this time I wanted to create this wheel that has these circles that kind of go around the outside so I'm going to start by just again I'm going to control D duplicate change the color shrink it down control shift and shrink it down and this is my center hole that I'll just leave there for later on that's where my axle is going to go through again you would definitely this has to be set really precisely so your axle fits nice and tight and now I'm going to just kind of freehand the other part so I'm going to draw a circle up here kind of I'm going to use the align to toolbar control shift a and center it sideways not up and down because I don't want it in the center I want it up a little bit so again, I made sure it's centered sideways. Now I'm going to draw a couple little like eyeball things. Actually, let's draw one and let's duplicate it. Make sure they're the same. And I'm going to hold down Control and slide it sideways. Now these look like they're kind of centered, but I want to make sure they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually first let's move these a little closer. Shift click both of them, right click and group them, and then center them together. So I have click the outside click the little hole thingies make sure first selected is selected over here I'm gonna center them so now I know that they're nice and centered they're evenly spaced I got this thing there and now I'm ready to create my radial patterns what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all th all these the two ellipses and the circle right click and group them together and if I click on them a second time to go to the kind of curvy or the rotational dialog thing if I rotate it now they spin around themselves like that I like them to spin around the center so this little plus again that's the rotational center I can move that so I'm gonna go over here turn some snaps on especially this snap right here that's the rotational center snap make sure I turn that on. I'm gonna grab this drag it down towards here and it should jump to the center of my circle see as it gets close it jumps and sticks to it so now my rotational center is not in the center of this it's down here and as you see when I rotate this it actually will spin around that instead of spinning around itself and why this is really nice is because now I can click on it control D duplicate it hold down control or click it again hold down control and I can go and make let's say I make uh, let's put one there now I'm gonna I could just keep control D and do another one but I'm a little bit lazy so I'll do one more thing I'll click this and this control D them together click on it again to bring it the curvy thing remember when you click on things once you can resize them you click on them a second time you can rotate them again I'm holding on control so it snaps those angles and I'm gonna bring this all the way around there 
and I can kind of make my nice design that rotates that rotationally around in a nice evenly spaced because I held down control. Now let's say you wanted, um, you realize you're done, hey, I only want three. I can go back here, duplicate it, and this time I can hold down control, maybe put one down here. I think that's the right angle. Put one over there, and you can space it by three. And then maybe let's, you could draw other circles in here and kind of rotate them around. But again, it's really nice. You draw, again, I'll go through one more time because I went through it kind of quick. Draw your shape. Click it a second time. Remember, if you click it twice really fast, it does weird things. So you want to click it once to bring up the... Actually, I think clicking it. I just ungrouped it by doing that. Let's group it. So I click it once. I can resize it. Click it twice. It lets you rotate it. It brings up that rotate that little rotational um, center thing shows up. And as long as you have the rotational centered snap thing on, you can drag this and move it somewhere else. Like if I put it over here, let's say, it's going to rotate around that point. But if I put this right in the center of my circle, it's going to rotate around the center of my kind of circle wheel. And, oops, I want to duplicate it first. And I can kind of rotate it around there. And again, as long as it's a multiple of 15 degrees, it's pretty easy to get this thing nice and nicely oriented so it's balanced. Especially when you're making wheels, you want they want to be symmetrical and balanced, otherwise they're going to kind of wobble. So there are two easy ways of... of creating your wheel and removing materials so that your mousetrap car will roll even faster and it allows you to kind of really throw in some creativity into your wheel design.